Hello, this is a short little tutorial um, that I'm making because um, for people having a quick introduction to Maya, maybe they're just working uh, to bring meshes and textures into the engine and building material for them, just setting up simple artwork. Um, I find that some of the tutorials are either not too focused on this subject or they're just not existent or they're a little bit old. So I'm going to show you in this tutorial how to take a model from Maya, textures from Substance Painter, bring them into Unity, set up the model, create a material, put it together in a prefab, and put it into a Unity scene. That's it. So it's a quick turnaround Maya Substance Painter Unity to get 3D art into the edge. Cool. So um, where we're going to start first is the model in Maya. So I've got a simple model here that is of an abstract object that has no shape in particular. I'm going to use the FBX file format to bring this out of Maya and bring it into other packages. So uh, I'm just going to select the object. I'm going to make sure it's named something sensible. Uh, I'm going to make sure that there is some kind of a UV unwrap on this. Good. That's important for texturing it. Um, I always keep my hierarchy open so I can make sure that there isn't some wackiness going on, that I'm actually just exporting the one shape that I mean to. Um, and I'm also going to peek in my inspector and make sure that there's no history sitting on this. The only case when we want history on an item that we're exporting out of Maya into a game engine is when we're using some kind of skinning or deformation, right? If you delete all the history on a, uh, a character that's bound to a bunch of joints and animates, then you're going to delete that skin definition and then the character won't move anymore. So in this case, this is just what we call a static shape. So it's not going to do anything fancy. It's just a flat object that doesn't do anything. So um, there's the game exporter, which I do recommend for any animations that you export. Otherwise, I would say just use the export selection tool. Export things as FBX. That's a very simple, universally recognized format that Unity does really well with. Um, and then just export it to your drive. Next up is Substance Painter. I've already created a new project with this, but I'll show you again. Um, I want to use the Unity 5 algorithmic template, even though we're well past Unity 5 now. Um, and I'm going to just find my file. Oh, that's images, sorry. I'm going to select my FBX and hit OK. Great. So I'm not going to do anything fancy here. I'm just going to put a, a texture on it so that we can see what is happening to the surface. So let's create a new fill layer. I'll set it to one of these canned textures. Um, let's do something that's not just shiny. There we go. Rust is perfect. Um, and then let's make it pretty. Let's bake some ambient occlusion on there and all the other maps that are included in that. OK, great. So um, now that we have that done, I'm going to say File, Export Textures. So again, there's a couple uh, prefabs in here. These are meant to work with Unity's standard shader, which might not be exactly how your shaders are set up, but it's a great starting point. You can create your own custom ones in here if you want. I'm not going to talk about that in this video, but um, you can definitely play with it. I'm going to go with standard metallic. Uh, and this is perfectly fine. So choose where it exports. I usually put it in my downloads folder first, um, and then I pluck it out of there and put it where it needs to be, just because I don't really like exporting directly into important project folders. OK, open folder. OK, and here are my files. So I'm going to keep those handy. I'm just going to keep that window open and pop over to Unity. So in Unity, I'm going to create a new project. I'm using Unity 2019.4 because that's the current stable version that doesn't have any explosions from new and exciting features. And I'm going to use the Universal Render Pipeline. Um, there's two new pipelines available. Universal Render Pipeline is designed to run on everything, including slower, older devices. High Definition Pipeline is for wacky, fast stuff like um, high-end gaming PCs, um, Xbox, a Series X, PS5, all that sort of stuff. Um, I'm going to use Universal Render Pipeline because the quality can still scale pretty high, 
Um, and I'm sure it's going to run on a laptop, a Nintendo Switch, a phone, etc. So create that project. This will just take a minute. Mm -hmm. So let's update this. We've got our uh, texture, some substance painter are done. Now we're now going to bring our model into Unity once this uh, project finishes setting itself up. This is only going to happen the first time. This is Unity initializing a new product and all the associated dependencies from it. Um, opening up this project afterwards will be a lot quicker. OK, so when we choose a universal render pipeline or high definition render pipeline, we come with this uh, sample scene that has just a bunch of stuff in it. Uh, um, Quick overview of Unity. We have our scene view. This is where you uh, tumble around and do your thing. It controls like Maya. So hold down Alt, uh, left click, middle click, right click. Uh, here's our game view. When the game is running with this play button, this is where we see our game. We have our hierarchy, which is our scene view, the objects that are in the current scene. And we have our projects. With this, uh, this is a folder that is a real folder on our system. We can actually right click and say Show and Explorer and see that this is the same hierarchy in the project as it is in uh, in uh, our computer. So this is where we're going to store all of our game assets. This is also where we're going to put anything that we want imported. So um, I'm going to make a new folder, call this uh, video demo. That's what we're doing right now. Um, it's under the assets folder. That's important for me to point out. Whoops. If it's not under the assets folder, it won't get imported. So make sure it's under the assets. I'm going to take these textures and put them there. And I'm also going to grab my uh, FBX and put it in there. So FBX is in there, textures are in there. Great. So now when I switch back to Unity, it's automatically going to import these items. There it is. So I see my new folder, uh, video demo. So odd shape. There's my model right there. I can look at it. And then I have the uh, Albedo, Metallic Smooth, and my normal map. Great. So the model we know is in there. And the textures we know are in there. So now we need to put together a material. I can drag my model into my scene just by dragging that object. This is technically called a prefab, although it's a prefab that's just auto-generated from the model. Uh, prefabs can do a lot more than just be models. They can have scripts and components on them as well. So I could have uh, this model that is also, let's say, a player controller because it has a player script on it. It's also a light because there's a light on it. There can be any number of components on this object um, and this prefab. Prefabs can also have child objects. But uh, we're not getting too into that right now. We're just setting up our so I have this. Um, we can see it's coming with a default material, Lambert 1. That came from Maya, because I never actually named my material. We just have this default Lambert 1 with no information on it. That's fine. We can replace that. Um, this is grayed out, because this material doesn't actually exist as like a, a material that I can edit inside my project. I'll need to create a new one for that. So let's do that. So I'm going to, inside the video demo folder, just right click. Create material. Okay. I can just drag and drop that onto the model. If I want to be more precise about this, I can look at my mesh renderer component and look at what's under the materials. And I can drag and drop uh, the material right into here, which is useful if you have more than one material per object. I don't usually recommend that, but it's useful for that. So. Um, here's a material. This is a blank material right now. There's no textures assigned to it. I can drag and drop them in just by doing this. So video transparency connects to the base map, metallic smooth to the metallic map, and normal to the normal map. Um, 
Oftentimes, your normal map won't be recognized as a normal map when you first copy it into the folder. That's where you see this little message. This texture is not marked as a normal map. You can click Fix Now here, uh, and that will fix it. I'll also show you how to set it up correctly from the texture. So when I click on this texture, the texture type defaults to default. But I can change it here to normal map. I hit apply, and there we go. And we won't see that warning anymore about it not being uh, set up properly. OK, so now we have odd shape in our scene. Uh, so this is our material, the way that we set it up. This is our model that we brought in from Maya and the material on it so that we can see it shading properly. Uh, so now all we need to do is uh, drag this back into our project to create a new prefab out of it. And create an original prefab. Mm -hmm. So this is our actual odd shape prefab. And there we go. We just set up a piece of artwork.